Hello everyone, this is Nathan Begdahl, and I'm here to talk about the new input map, or key map, that I've been working on for Blender. So the reason I've been working on this new key map is basically for the same reason that Blender's user interface got an overhaul in 2.5, because it's really starting to show its age with weird quirks and hotkeys crammed into really strange places. Uh, the old key map made a lot of sense when Blender was first created, but Blender is now pretty different and the key map just hasn't kept up. And I think it's time for a good spring cleaning. So I'm gonna try and keep this video short, so it won't be an exhaustive look at the entirety of the key map so far. Instead, I'm gonna show three things that I think represent the overall direction of the key map really well, and the thought process behind it. So let's get started. So first things first, how do you get this key map? Well, it's not in the official releases, but it is in the nightly builds. So if you go to builder.blender.org and download one of those builds, then you should have access to it. And to get to it, you simply go to the presets and select Blender 2012 Experimental. Uh, that shows how long I've been working on it. It's slow going, but steady progress. Anyway, select that and then go into Blender. And now you are ready to use the key map. So the first thing I want to show you about the key map are some of the things that are the same, some of the things that I haven't changed. And that's because the intent of this key map isn't to change things just for the sake of change. In other words, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So for example, if you hit A, it still acts as the select all toggle. I think that's a really cool key. I think it works really nicely. It's very convenient, very fast. It's fantastic. No reason to throw that out. Also, viewport navigation is the same. Use middle mouse button, shift middle mouse to pan, and control middle mouse to zoom in and out, and you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out as well, and so on and so forth. Also, the numerical keypad still works. You can do front, right, top, and all of the permutations of that with shift and control, and uh, zero for camera view, five for toggling perspective, so on and so forth. These things all still work. Uh, using comma and period to change the uh, transform pivots still work. I think those are really convenient. The left and right arrow keys still do frame stepping. Uh, when you're grabbing something or rotating something, let me select something. Uh, when you're grabbing something or rotating something, hitting X, Y, or Z still limits it to those axes, and the double of those keys does the local version and so on. I think that works reasonably well. And the list goes on. There's plenty of things that I'm keeping the same because there's just no reason to change them. They work really well. So what are some of the things that are different? Well, the first thing that I want to show you that's different is mode switching. So in the old key map, hitting tab would toggle in and out of edit mode, and you had control tab to uh, get into different things depending on what type of object you have selected and so on and so forth. And that really just... It doesn't work well. It made a lot of sense back in the day when Blender only had two modes, object mode and edit mode, but there are a lot more modes than that now, and they all need to be quickly switchable. Like, we need to be able to get into those modes and out of those modes quickly for all of them, because they're all used in different workflows. And right now, that's just not the case. So instead of taking a toggle mentality, I'm taking a direct switching mentality. So if you hit spacebar, it brings up the switch mode menu, and you can immediately just click on one of those to change the menu. Now, clicking with a mouse is really not a fast way to do this. So there's a couple of things that I will say about that. First is that I'm kind of in anticipating Pi menus with this. So my hope is that we will get Pi menus down the road, and then this will turn into a quick gesture. So all these things that I've attached menus to uh, can then become uh, gestural switches or gestural tool invocations and so on and so forth. But in this particular case, we also have a nice feature in Blender uh, well, I mean, it applies to other menus as well, but it's particularly relevant to this case, which is that if you hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, and so on if the menu is longer, it will select that menu item. Now, that doesn't sound super relevant quite at first, but what this means is that if I hit space and then 1, it goes to object mode, space and then 2 goes to edit mode, space and then 3, sculpt mode, and so on and so forth. And if you actually place your hand in a position with your thumb over the space bar, you'll notice that 
uh, hitting one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., is really fast, really easy and comfortable from that position, and it turns into just a simple hand roll. So I can switch into edit mode almost as quickly as hitting tab, almost as quickly. It does take an additional keystroke, uh, but it's a comfortable hand position, and for everything other than switching into edit mode, it takes the same number of keystrokes and it's more comfortable. So I think this is a really good trade-off. The other thing is that then we don't run into those confusing situations where you're in uh, like pose mode on an armature and then you hit tab and you go into edit mode, but then if you hit control tab, is that supposed to take you back to pose mode? And if you hit tab, is it supposed to take you back to pose mode or object mode? It's just, it's confusing. A toggle mentality doesn't make sense with more than two options. So it also avoids confusion because we're directly switching to things. So that is the first different thing that I want to show you, and I hope that the justification behind that makes sense, and I hope you can see this very comfortable. I've tried to choose something that is very easy to do so th since this is a fairly common uh, thing to be doing in Blender. So the next different thing that I want to show you is selection. And right off the bat, I have to confess, I have gone with left mouse button selection. And I'm sure about half of you are cheering me on at this point, and half of you are cursing me as the worst thing that has ever happened to Blender. So I do feel like I owe a bit of a justification. However, I'm trying to keep this video short. So I'm only only going to give a half justification that at least shows that I'm thinking about it, this, that this isn't an arbitrary decision. So let's say you are using just normal Blender right now without my key map, with the traditional key map. Uh, so we have right mouse button select for objects. Then we go to the outliner and hit right mouse button and oh, oops, it brought up a context menu. How embarrassing. So my concern is this. If we are going to be using right mouse button selection in Blender, it seems like it would be a good idea to use it everywhere. Because if we are being inconsistent about it, where in some areas in Blender, we have right mouse button select, and in other areas we have left mouse button select, it is forcing the user to do a mental context switch, to say, to have to think, at least on some level, am I in a area that is right mouse button select or left mouse button select? I don't think that is a good thing, a good kind of mental hurdle to impose upon the users, particularly uh, new users, but even experienced users, it it's annoying. I, anyway, I, I just think it's... <sighs> consistency is good. Uh, of course, you can be overly consistent uh, or too obsessive about consistency, but I think there's a really clear case where it's kind of ridiculous that we have two different mouse buttons for selection in different areas. So if we're going to do right mouse button select, we should at least go all the way and do it everywhere. So that's my partial justification. Uh, I'll talk perhaps some other time about why I chose left mouse button instead of right, right mouse button. But anyway, I hope you see that at least I'm thinking about this. This isn't just an arbitrary decision. Um, anyway, so mouse button aside, dragging is box select. I think that's really useful. Some people are concerned that with something like that, that um, the manipulators become a problem. Uh, but in fact, it's really simple to make them work. I don't even know what the issue is. We have selection and we have dragging of the... It, it, it just works. Uh, so that's not a problem. Okay, and then holding down alt and dragging is lasso select. But how you specifically access those tools isn't nearly as interesting or cool as how I've unified how adding to selection and removing from selection works. So in previous, in uh, kind of the traditional key map, click select, uh, replaces selection by default without any modifier keys. And then holding down shift uh, is like a toggle. It toggles your selection. But that's really annoying, especially if you're uh, working on a very dense mesh. And people who have been in that situation know what I'm talking about. You're building up a selection and then you just want to like add a couple of vertices to your selection, but it ac accidentally removes some other vertices from your selection instead. And then you have to like fix that. And it's just, it's a really annoying situation. So I feel like Toggle select is not a good fit for 3D editing. I think that we should stick to replace select by default without any modifier keys, and then have specific modifiers for add select and remove select. So what I've done is I've made it so that uh, all of the tools, all the selection tools, even loop cut and, or sorry, not loop cut, uh, loop select, and all those things, by default is replace select. 
and then holding down shift is add select. It doesn't toggle, it always adds. And then holding down control is remove select. It always removes. And this is the case with all the tools, so it keeps everything unified, consistent. If you've used one selection tool, you at least know that aspect of how to use all the other selection tools. It makes it so you don't have to think and be like, wait, which tool am I using? Okay, how do I do add select? How do, how do I do remove select? Can I even do add <laughs> select or is it toggle select? It just makes everything unified. Uh, now, there's still areas in Blender where I haven't set that up right because some of the selection operators in Blender don't even have the features to be able to do that. So I actually have to go into the C code and add that before I can put it in the key map and I haven't done that with all of them. But uh, I've done it with at least the, the main selection tools in the 3D view and uh, the uh, mesh editing component. So those are kind of three things that I think illustrate pretty well kind of the, the general thrust of the new uh, input map, which is I'm trying to make things more consistent. I'm trying to make things a little bit easier, more convenient to what people are normally doing on a day-to-day -day basis in Blender. But I'm also being somewhat conservative about it. I'm not changing things just for the sake of change. I'm like, if something works well, I'm leaving it be. So anyway, I hope to create some more videos that are maybe covering specific areas in more detail because there's a lot that is already in this key map, even though it's still unfinished. And I hope that people will start using this, at least in some contexts. Currently, I consider it feature complete for mesh modeling. Uh, not necessarily for sculpt mode, but for mesh edit mode, I consider it more or less feature complete. And it's definitely at the stage where I would really like some good feedback from experienced modelers on their frustrations or maybe things that I forgot about because I'm modeling is not my primary forte. Uh, but anyway, I'm excited about this. I think it's one of the big areas that's still lacking in Blender's kind of user interface experience. So, uh, well... Woo! Hope to work with other people to keep this going and keep making it better. Thanks!